Good morning. Welcome to the second Sunday before Lent and this short reflective time that we can spend together uh, thinking about the light of the world and also of course as it is a second Sunday before Lent a few thoughts on what Lent is all about or what it might be about for us. Uh, there'll be a confession and absolution and some other prayers and a blessing at the end. So let's spend a few moments in companionable silence before we commence this little service. We meet in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, our living God. Amen. Sometimes it's difficult um, at the end of the week or the beginning of a new week, whichever you think about, to find the words to say sorry to God uh, for ourselves. So the Church of England has a pattern and a way of doing it and a way of assuring us that we are forgiven. So in a few moments of quiet, Let's gather ourselves as we reflect on the past week, the things that we've done, the things that we've not done, the things that we've thought and the things that we wish we hadn't thought. For me, the wonderful thing about God is that whatever we do every day, Every week, every month, every year, we start with a clean slate and with a fresh opportunity to be the person that God has created us to be. And so, know that you are beloved of God. Know that in all things, God sees you, knows you, and loves you. Amen. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Amen. Now, our readings are quite interesting today. I'm only going to read one of them, but I'm going to reference all three. So if you want to know where they are, the first one is in the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 1, for some unaccountable reason, except it sets the person of uh, wisdom. And then, so it's Proverbs 8, verse 1, and verse 22 to 31. The second reading is from Paul's alleged Paul's letter to the Colossians uh, chapter 1 verses 15 to 20 and our main reading today is from the Gospel of St John uh, chapter 1 verses 1 to 15 yes that is the Christmas reading uh, and it's interesting isn't it that we've just finished uh, the, the season of Christmas the season of Epiphany and we're now moving through after Candlemas, very brief bit of ordinary time, and then into Lent. And I think this is just reminding us um, of the nature of God. We've been celebrating Jesus and his birth and his incarnation um, over the last few weeks. And now the lectioners uh, remind us about the nature of God and what it is and who it is that Jesus is part of. And so this reading comes from um, the Gospel of St John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness 
and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. We have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, our living God. Amen. It is one of the most beautiful readings um, in the Bible, this song, poem, prayer at the beginning of the Gospel of St John not interested in genealogies particularly, he's not interested in stables and stories. He gets straight into who was Jesus, what is Jesus all about. And I find this reading always a joy to read and a joy to hear. But the bits that really have made me struck me today, um, there's, a, there's an obvious piece in there that there's whole reams of talking I could do on it, uh, which is the word became flesh and dwelt among us. It was also in, in last week's story, um, last week's reading from Hebrews, uh, where we say, since therefore the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things. We should always remember that Jesus, although he is the Son of God, was for a time 100% human and dwelt as a human being among us in the midst of humanity and remained untempted, well, tempted, but remained without sin. So we should never forget that. That's a really important thing. But today I want to think about, um, do we know Jesus do we fully understand the nature of Jesus? And John says um, that he came to his own, yet the world did not know him. He, was, he came to what was his own. His own people did not accept him. Now, if we put a subtle spin on that and treat ourselves as his own people, the question is, I think, that this poses for us, particularly in this run-up to Lent, is would we know Jesus? if he came among us? Would we recognise him if he was here? And this is a very different question to asking if we'd recognise the Holy Spirit. We all, I think, or many of us are privileged to have recognised and felt the Holy Spirit working in our lives and in the lives of those around us. But would we know Jesus if he came among us today? I don't know. I find that really, really um, challenging. And of course, last week in the reading uh, from Luke with the presentation of Christ at the temple, if you celebrated Candlemas last week, um, there's that wonderful old prophet Simeon who tells Mary that Jesus will be, Jesus' destiny is to be the rising and falling of many in Israel and to be a sword that will pierce her own soul. So there's nothing easy about Jesus. There's nothing easy for Simeon about knowing the nature of Jesus, even though it is the, 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 the catalyst for Simeon to, to say, now let us thou, thou thy servant depart in peace, for the nunc dimittis 
Um, so he feels that his life has now gone full circle, has been complete, uh, and he's been waiting for the Messiah and recognises uh, in the infant Jesus, the very Messiah that he has been waiting for. But do we know Jesus? And actually the next question is, should we? Are we expected to? Would we recognise the Son of God among us? And that brings me to my final thought about Lent. Coming to Lent, it's about 10 days away. What do I think um, about Lent this year? What am I going to take up or put down? And for me, I think that that time is going to be spent probably thinking more deeply about what Jesus would be if he did come among us now, where he would appear, how would we recognise him? Would he come on clouds? Would it be obvious that these are the end times, the heavens are open, the angels are doing whatever they're doing in Revelation, and Jesus descends, lo, he comes in clouds descending. So that would be my reflection. Is Jesus going to come among us as a nice, middle-class English person or a nice comfortably off well-heeled American um, in that, on that side of the world or will he come somewhere in Africa or the Middle East or China and would we know would we know that Jesus had come the end times were beginning so that's where I would pitch my tent during Lent, ha ha. <laughs> I would be thinking more about how I might prepare, how I might prepare to receive Jesus. I don't think I'd ever be able to recognise him unless he stomped up to me and said, Oi, Chris, follow me. And then I would be nonplussed and I would go, but I think and I hope that I would be ready to do that and set my hand to the plough. So there's a thought for Lent. How would I be ready? How would I make myself ready to receive Jesus? And how and where might he appear? I hope that's got you thinking a bit. Certainly got me thinking a bit anyway. I have spoken in the name of, the, of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So now, we come to the time of our prayers. I will pray briefly uh, in the context of COVID, obviously, uh, but also in the context of our friends and neighbours and the world and our church. Let us pray. Lord, we pray for our church, for all that it has been, for all that it is and for all that it could become. It is incredibly difficult at the moment for the churches to function effectively and there are new and exciting ways of being church. We thank you, Lord, for all of those who are engaging with these new ways, whilst holding fast to the traditions of the church. We pray for all the leaders of your church, both lay and ordained, that you will surround them with your love and care, strengthen them in their varied ministries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the world, still in the grip of this fearful pandemic. We pray for all of those who are involved 
in research and development of vaccines, of treatments, of cures, of ways of mitigating the effects of this dreadful virus. We pray for those staff in hospitals around the world, particularly for our NHS staff as they work long hours in a constant battle against the virus, in a constant effort to save lives and care for those who are suffering. We pray for all those who are involved in test and trace, for those who are involved in administering the vaccine. Lord, for the whole panoply of people involved in dealing with this pandemic, we pray for them, that you will strengthen them in their tasks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our networks, for the people in our town, in our village, for our friends and neighbours, for our colleagues at work, for those we bump into occasionally on Zoom and think, oh, I haven't seen them for a long time. Lord, thank you for all this technology that enables us to stay connected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit at this time. In a few moments of silence, we name those known to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for those who mourn as we remember those we have loved and see no longer. Surround them, Lord, with your love and care. Hold them in your gentle hands. Walk with them as they journey in their grief. Help us to be present for them as they mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now our final prayer. God, our Creator, by your gift, the tree of life, was set at the heart of the earthly paradise and the bread of life at the heart of your church. May we who are nourished by your love here on earth be transformed, be transformed by the glory of the Saviour's cross and enjoy the delights of eternity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those you love and those you struggle with this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.